little bit past time here, so I'm going to call the meeting to order. Everybody, please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. The Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, one year of life, for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty, and justice for all. First order of business, we have the minutes of the Silic Men's meeting, which occurred on Monday, September 14th. I make a motion we accept them as printed. I'll second it. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. And we have the minutes of the Silic Men's department head meeting and workshop, which occurred on Monday, September 14th. I make a motion we accept them as printed. Second it. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. We have the check voucher totals. Payroll for week ending 919 was $37,378.75. Accounts payable for week ending 912 were $82,037.46. For a total dispersed last week of $119,416.21. Make a motion we sign. Second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. These are the batch totals. Uh, we do review and initial every bill and invoice that comes in. Then they put in the batches for tax purposes. Department of Workload, which is here in the file, if anybody would like to look at it. We have a timber tax warrant to collect zero dollars and zero cents. Make a motion to sign it. Second. All in favor? All right. It's just part of the final paperwork on a cut. We have a request for abatement. The Gene Dietzel Revocable Trust had an original assessment of 277500 The revised assessment of the same with no change. The recommendation by our assessor is that the value is appropriate and recommends that we deny it. Based on that, I'll make a motion to deny the new date. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We have a request for abatement. This is Ronald Plant Jr., 5 Forest Lane. The original assessment was 176000 The revised assessment is 146000 The difference of $30,000. Our assessor recommends we grant this abatement. The overall value represents the taxpayer's fair share of the tax burden. Simply, if the overall value is correct and how the land or buildings value distributed as a moot point, Based on the preliminary value of the 2015 reevaluation, the new market value is indicated to be 146000 Make a motion to approve it. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So, request for abatement for, I don't know what this is, the property owner is ARC. Citizens Bank. Oh, Citizens Bank. Tara Bryan. Original assessment is 495,900. The revised assessment is 445,000 for a difference of 50,900. Our assessor recommends that we grant it, and it's based on the preliminary 2015 evaluations. I make a motion to approve it. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Possibly chipping, request for abatement. Original assessment was $748,400. The revised assessment is $596,200 for a difference of $152,200. And this is again based on the preliminary value of the 2015 reevaluation. The new market value was indicated to be $596,200. I make a motion to approve it. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Request for abatement from John Francis, 8 Pond Road. It's the Southern Fillion Road. 
The original assessment was $652,688. The revised assessment is $598,772 for a difference of $53,916. And again, this is based on the twenty fifteen reevaluation. I make a motion we approve it. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 We have a purchase order for Sullivan Tire. It's to buy buy twenty-four. Tires for the police department. The amount of sixteen hundred and seventy-six dollars and sixty-four cents. It's for Sullivan Tire of me. Make a motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. We have a consent calendar agenda from the executive council, which is here for anybody to look at if they'd like. We have an annual report from the Lake Region Planning Commission, which is here for anybody to inspect. Is this, is this something you're going to need, Ellen, for the yeah, town report? Okay. Just copy that over here. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. There's an email regarding Time Warner Cable. Okay, the program. We have a notice of decision from the Zoning Board of Adjustment that they granted a request by Dan and that Dan McCann for 110 Hudson Shore Road. Special exception was granted. Again, we don't know for what because they don't put it in their letter. So, and there was also a Zoning board granted a an except, special exception for the Abundant Harvest Family Church located on Route 16, 530 Route 16. Going the auction house. Yep. Uh, we have the final letter from our auditor, which is uh, complete. Uh, we have the completed copy of the audit. Uh, it's here for anybody to look at it if they'd like. Uh, long story short, the audit this year went exceedingly smooth. Um, Many of the deficiencies which the town has been cited for in the past have in fact been corrected and it's noted in this letter and in the findings of the actual audit. Um, the remaining deficiencies that we have are ones that we are working on. Uh, for instance, the tracking of the capital assets, which is something that they had, um, something the town has never done. And we are in the process, we just now bought the module for the computer to be able to track them. Uh, the adoption of the Personnel policy last week was again one of the answers to one of the deficiencies that they noted for 2014. Because you can understand this is all about 2014's money, not 2015. But it did, it went very well, very happy. Uh, we get a notice from the, and it's here for anybody to look at it if they'd like. It doesn't make a lot of sense to me, and I tried reading through this, that it is some kind of dry. But it's from the State Department of Revenue Administration, and it's part of their reporting on our reevaluation. Um, and they're monitoring activity for the sales that they were using to establish the new values. It is here, and everybody's free to look at it if they'd like. That is the red folder. Old business. We've covered some of these in workshop, but Brad, if you would just up maybe update the public on the cover bridge. Yep, um, the crew is back up there working now. Change order three has been uh, sign and approve as everybody knows. Wood is all in order. They're, they're working their way up there. I believe their anticipated finish date now is sometime in mid December. Uh, they look to be on track for that. The last payment that's going out to them puts them at, it was 78% done time wise and 86% done on money wise on the uh, project. Is. So it's been uh, coming along and look forward to having that, that phase of the wrap up. <coughs> All right, and as far as the next phase, of what, what, where are we on? We are in the, we call it the negotiation phase with Hoyle Tanner right now. I have to get a contract of amendment approved by DOT with them. We've done the first phase of it. What they do is they send me a spreadsheet with their scope of work on it. 
and they're waiting for the hours, and I have to fill it in to what I think will take them to do it. Then they, I send that to them, and they fill in what they think it will take to do it. Then we get together, negotiate it down, or by common ground, and we submit that to BOT, and that's what they will approve for a for the contract amendment. Then they'll start the design work based on that. And that's the that's the final phase to put the bridge physically back across the river. That's right. They'll be to design the new abutments, the road profile, approaching it if they raise it, which they we anticipate doing. Um, all that, so it'll be the final thing to put to be able to put a car back over the bridge when they're all done. And when do you anticipate that 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 portion? I would anticipate that the contract amendment part will be done this fall, so they'll be doing the design work during the early winter and through the winter. Should be ready to go into bid in the spring, and construction will start late spring, early summer to be completed. I would assume next summer, depending on. You know, I've got to see what their scope of work and their time frame estimated would be on that project, but there's no reason I wouldn't think that it would happen during the course of one summer. So. Okay. All right. And the update on the money part, which is one that I've been asking, we are we are fine. We are. Yep. There, there's more than sufficient money in capital reserve to. It's in the capital reserve fund for the bridge to cover the change orders that have occurred. That's right. And the library masonry repairs are scheduled for Wednesday, Thursday? Yep. Wednesday, Thursday expects to be in here to get a real good jump on the copper work up there and be substantially done by the end of this week. Okay. Um, highway garage. Highway garage, we spoke about it at a meeting a little bit ago. We have uh, proposals from an engineering firm uh, to do the structural engineering for it to design the foundation and footprint and everything. We have a proposal from an architect to design the building and a proposal from a construction management company to provide the budget numbers to get it all ready to go up to bid to that, to that level there. Um, I just had mine and I've lost it already, but it's here. Um, oh, sorry. Okay. And I'd like to act on that actually tonight. Because one of the things that we have talked about is the need to get this get this moving. We do have a proposal from Bowen Corporation. Um, and it's this is on the addition to the public works garage. And these are uh, I'll, I'll read this out loud. It looks like we have a preliminary design that seems to work with the town's needs and structural constraints of the existing building. The square footage of the addition is now proposed to be three thousand four hundred and fifty square feet. To provide a revised budget for the town meeting budget process, our fee would be $2,800. The project structurally, structural engineering budget is $8,000, and the architectural fee would be $9,500. Our construction man management fee for the addition and renovations would be 7% of the project cost. Following items will be carried by the town, our civil engineering permitting, etc. Um, I would like to make a motion that we authorize the expenditure of up to $20,300 to contract for the engineering and architectural services to get this thing moving. Second. Any discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. 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 So when you contact them, if you would let them know that we are ready, we we'll want to go. I mean, we, we would very much like to be able to do that this coming year. Yeah. Um, we are <coughs> trying to do it without, without raising taxes and without bonding it. So. We need, uh, we need to move. All right. Um, fuel bids. I'm going to give you, we discussed this up in a, in a workshop, but the long and the short of it is it was a, one of the bids was quite complicated, and we've given Brad another week to come back to us uh, with a recommendation as to where we're going to go on that. Any other old business? No. Uh, new business. Public input. Yes, sir. New business. Okay. Uh, I'd like to know what's going on with my neighbor, Mr. Paul Lippenchuk. I'm uh, on Bob Ray's property. So, yep. Uh, the issue with his uh, hoarding and his uh, dangerous uh, activities and his annoying activities and his horses activities and the fact that he's incompetent, irresponsible, and so forth and so on. And it's just, I agree with it. Dave Senefo. I asked Dave to look into it a few weeks back. He's, good, he's loading the roadside with trash now, not just his own property, but on the roadside. 
He puts a car on the road practically all the time. Um, you name it, his horses are loose every other day. They were last night. I've had to call the police about every other day on the guy. And nothing ever seems to get done. Um, about a month ago or so, well, after it's been going on for a few years, he likes to play the game of chicken. Uh, I'm sure you're probably familiar with the term. When you cross the road, head on into somebody straight on, and see who uh, goes in the ditch first, kind of thing. He's played that game with me four times. I've complained to the police department four times. One time was super scary. Um, and just about a month ago, a little over, he was caught doing it to somebody else. The police have never done anything about it with me because it's just my word against his. No witnesses. So they can't do it. Well, like I say, about a month ago, he crossed the road on Chicago Road, go head on into Mr. Murrow's truck with two men in the truck. One of the men, I believe, hit the mirror. They were luckily not going very fast, maybe 25, 30, and uh, follow it right into his truck. He deliberately. Mm -hmm. The police never took his license. That man still driving today. Why is he still allowed to drive? That's called dangerous. Yeah, it's called mm -hmm. man attempted manslaughter. But let me let me let me just stop you there for, for only for a second. And I and listen, I I truly understand what it is you're going through over there. I am familiar with Mr. Litwinchuk and his challenges. The police don't have any, the police don't have any ability to take his license. Period. I do know that he has been summoned slash arrested now several times. I don't know how many complaints are pending in the court system. But that is the place where that portion is going to have to be dealt with, and I hope they do. Yeah. Um, I'd love to sit here and tell you that I have all the faith in the world in our justice system and that the, that the court's going to yeah. take care of that, and I guess I would be extremely optimistic if I necessarily believe that, but that, that is where that, those decisions are going to be made. As far as you bringing it to us, to be honest with you, this is the first time. I am, we are aware that the police department has been actively involved over there. I was not aware that there had been a complaint about the hoarding made to the town, because that is, that is something that is in our, our purview of responsibility. So that's, that's the first thing I knew about that. I do know that his property is a mess and that there's a whole bunch of stuff over there. But as far as what you've just now told us, my thoughts are that we will meet with Dave Seneca, who's our zoning officer, find out if in fact he has been over there and get, and get you an answer, because you should have one. Yeah, we, we can work on that part. He says, he talked to Brad, uh, and they decided to send him a letter to tell him to clean it up, I guess. Uh, I don't know what the outcome of that was. We, we, will, we will find that out, and we will get you an answer. Um, the first thing we would normally do to somebody is send them a letter, and there will be a time frame, though, by which that he doesn't answer it or doesn't do anything, and then we'll... Go to the next step. The main reason I'm concerned is because this has been going on for about two years. Mm -hmm. The police always keep saying that, well, they're doing something about it. It's in the courts. La di da, di da. He has a ton of cases pending in court. I do know but, that. But when does he go to court? He never seems to go to court. I can only tell you, Bob, and it, and it may even be worse now than when I retired seven years ago, but it was not at all unusual, at all unusual, for a case to take two years even in district court. Yeah. From the time of when you first made the arrest to where they get arraigned and then appointed counsel and then continuances. Right. So, I, you know, as far as the court portion update, you should be able to receive that from the police department. You should be able to call over there and speak to the chief or to uh, Bob King, who's the prosecutor, and, and find out when those cases are, in fact, scheduled to be heard. They will be on a schedule. Now, again, that doesn't mean the day before it's finally scheduled to appear that it doesn't get continued again. But there, there should be a current schedule of when those cases are supposed to be heard. Yeah. Yeah. 
you'll get it to this somehow. We'll reschedule. All right. But but they should be able to tell you what they're currently scheduled for. Right. Okay. It just seems ridiculous. Right. We had this we had this conversation in here a week ago on another item, and I and I agree with you that it's ridiculous. But you also need to understand that 99.9% .9 of the people abide by the rules. Right. Yeah. And we don't have those issues. Right. There are some that refuse to, and when they do refuse to, they yeah. pose us some challenges, and we'll we'll try to work through them. Okay. Okay. Sorry, well, no, and we will we will look into the portion that is under our area of responsibility, which is the the stuff in the right away. No. Okay. I appreciate anything you do. All right. Anything else? Public input. Oh. Conservation Commission took a letter from me in requesting that I be appointed to the Conservation Commission. They voted yes. I don't know if the letter made it over here or not. I don't think it does yet. I don't think we've seen it yet. Pardon me? Well, I don't think we've seen yeah, it. Right. But I don't have any issue no. at all. I mean, um, it's in their meeting. It's in their yeah, meeting minutes which, that they did it. We've been begging for people to volunteer, and we have one here. I don't want to let him go until we vote on it. You? No. I'll, I'll make a motion to. <laughs> I'll, say, I'll make a motion to Bruce Parsons be appointed as a representative on the conservation commission. I'll second it. Any discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Congratulations and thank you. We'll send you a letter. Thank you. I don't know. What is this? No, so we, we've been trying to get people to fill some of these vacancies. You want to step on up? Well, we're going to we'll gladly accept. Welcome aboard. I'll write a letter and then you'll just need to see Kelly to get sworn. I'm sorry, I can't hear a word you're saying. <laughs> you just need to see Kelly to get yeah, sworn. Yeah. Okay. She swore to me a lot. <laughs> I never swore it. <laughs> 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 May I have the correct spelling on that name, please? Which name? Bruce Parsons. Bruce, Bruce, Bruce Parsons. P A R S O N S. Thank you. The chief of police would know my name. <laughs> <laughs> well, she, she, she's a little gun shy now since she called Harry Merrill. What was it? Mary Merrill. Mary Merrill. We all saw that. Oh, God. <laughs> I thoroughly enjoyed it. <laughs> Do we have anything else? Yes. Um, do you have any further update on the property on Doors Corner Road that was brought up last week? We don't. Um, it's been back to our zoning officer and we're waiting to hear. So. The, um, I, I drove past there the next day after the meeting and had a conversation with the people there and actually the um, Open Door Church out of um, Ossipi, West Ossipi on Route 16 is, uh, has provided help to them mm -hmm. um, in the way of people and equipment and the uh, land has been cleared, uh, foundation has been leveled, they've put gravel down and they're pouring concrete. So the, the church uh, part, uh, minister said to me that um, they hope to be able to work through this with and that the church is providing them with all the assistance uh, possible. And, and, I, and I think that's wonderful, but the only, the only rub to that is, and I, I put in a call to Ellen a couple of days ago because I was approached, they do not currently have a valid building permit. Right. So my hope is that there's not a hope, you know, that, that somebody from that is communicating, because they, 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 the current, the building permit they had expired. And there is no new building permit on file, so. But they can do the site work. They can do the site work, but until they get through that process, I would hate to have anybody invest a whole lot of time and effort in something they couldn't ultimately use. So. Um, update, there was also the uh, take a walk in our shoes. I did it. I, this old fat man walked five miles in back. Didn't look like you lose any weight. You, I didn't see you walking five miles. I was walking the other way. Yeah. So it was uh, pretty well attended, uh, very well attended countywide, and uh, it, was a, it was a good thing. So. Um, the uh, county has appointed a new finance director who started work today. Okay, I hadn't heard that. His name is uh, Chuck Stewart, and he hails from uh, Meredith. His background is in school business administration. So he's 
He Good. enjoys the challenge, he said. And he ought to be a, one. And he ought to be a happy guy. <laughs> he enjoys the challenge. Glad you asked. It went very, very well. All the property sold. Mm -hmm. uh, generated $173,000, which will go back into the town coffers. And more importantly, because all the town, all those properties sold, they go back on the tax rolls, um, which is what we really was our goal from the get-go. But $173,000 isn't hard to take even. We had, and I don't think that anybody had actually done any real calculating on it, but we had hoped to, to garner $150,000. So we exceeded that and we're happy. It we went very well. My yeah, understanding was, I didn't go. I was there. It went, went, very well. went very well. Do you list anywhere that says what they sold for? You know what? Satisfied uh, board curiosity? I don't think we've got it yet. I think the same is still got it. I think the attorney still has the list. He's work. I don't yeah. know. But, but we'll certainly, we'll certainly post one. On that house that's falling into the lake? Uh, nope. Do we have anything else? One more? Uh, mm -hmm. Dave is meeting with Danny Drew this Thursday at the property and then go over the plan for it. Okay. Right. There is a dumpster in place and they are in the process of cleaning it up. All right. So, maybe a little movement on that. Uh, we still haven't borrowed. We still have not borrowed on the tan note. And as of today, we have $582,319.22 in the bank. So, okay, it's, keep going good. it's doing, going well. We have, we're anticipating, in order to meet the school payments, we'll probably end up borrowing for a short period of time, maybe October, but so far so good. <coughs> Anybody have anything else in public input? All right. We do have a need to go into a non-public. Um, it's under RSA 91A32C, meet with a tax collector. Um, by roll call vote, Bob Frank, yes. Frank Riley, yes. and Rick Morgan, yes. We will be back as soon as we can. <laughs> we'll reopen the public session. Do we have anything else to come before the meeting? I do not. Helen? No. Right? Nope. Other meetings this week? Is there a budget committee meeting this week? No, there's not. Not until October 7th, I believe it is. Mm -hmm. County Commissioner's meeting is Wednesday at 8.30 a.m. Okay. A.m. A.m. Why a.m.? Why not? You, you, can, you can have breakfast over at the nursing home, and then you can scoot over and have uh, have a meeting. That's right. Thank you. Uh, nothing else. I'm going to make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you.